So here we're going to cover some finals topics in this video. The idea in this problem is that you have to find the area of this triangle. And I know sometimes people can be confused by the directions here because it says find the area of each, okay? Um, the directions should be more specific, right? Find the area of the triangle below, okay? So all they mean is find the area of this triangle that I'm going to highlight in red, right? The reason why it says find the area of each is because there would be several questions in this set, right? There'd be 37, 38, 39, 40, right? And then you would find the area of each of them, okay? So that's all this means. Okay, in this case, you guys should know that the formula for the area of a triangle is one half of the base times the height. Okay, another way of thinking that is the same thing as base times height divided by two, okay? So however you want to do it, I usually show people to leave some blank parentheses to go put in our dimensions, right? The base of this triangle is seven, okay? And the height of this triangle is 3.8. So I would do 3.8 times 7, and then we would divide by 2 to get our final answer. So do this calculation. You can try it out on your own and see if you get what you should get for this one is 13.3. Okay, so again, half the base times the height. So you would do 9 times 4. Sorry, 9 times 4.4, and then you have to divide by 2. So again, the thing that you have to do is recognize that this is a triangle. And you have to remember the formula for the area of a triangle, right? And like we said, the base of this triangle is 9. That's the base, okay? And the height is that distance that goes from that side over to the other vertex of this triangle, right? That's how we calculate the height. So the height of this line, the length of that line is h, so that's the height. So the height is 4.4, but the base is 9, okay? So we would have to do 4.4 times 9 and then divide by 2. If you do that in your calculator, you would be able to get the final answer. So try that calculation on your own, and you should get 19.8. So we're going to jump around a little bit. The other question I had here was 55. Okay, so in this case, on a question like this, what you guys should see. guys should see is that we have an equation that says tangent of z equal to 0.0524. Okay, so now what I would do is I'd have to take the tangent inverse of both sides because um, as we learned during the trigonometry unit, right, that's the way that we undo the tangent function. Okay, the way we undo our trig functions is by taking the tangent inverse of them. So, this was a calculation we did in our, uh, I put too many zeros, sorry about that. Somebody knocked on the door. So 524, okay, and O, 524. Okay, well, tangent inverse of tangent of Z, okay, recognize we took the tangent inverse of both sides, that's why I tried to do that in red, okay, and then in black, notice that we have just the numbers that were already there on the left, the expressions, right? This thing just went right inside here, and this just went right inside there, okay? So the tangent inverse of the tangent is just the angle that we want to get, okay? So tangent inverse of tangent of z is just z, and that's why you do this calculation in your calculator, or you go look it up in the trig table and try to find out which angle it gives you that, okay? What this means is that we want to find, okay, tangent of what angle, right, what degrees can I put in here that would give me a number that is equal to this, right, or what, which of these would be the nearest to that, right? And so when we go look in the table, we look in the tangent column for a number that's the closest to this number, and then we go look uh, over which degree that comes from. We try to see which row that would be for in the degree, okay? So again, you can do that with the calculator or with the trigonometric table, but this is where you do the inverse trig, okay? So don't forget that you guys know how to do the tangent inverse, all right? So again, the next one for this one, if I want to find what angle would give me a cosine of 0 0.3420, then I take the inverse cosine of 0 0.3420. So again, you do this one either with your calculator or you're going to have to do it with a trick table. So in this case, like I was telling you, we're gonna, we have this equation right now. This is cosine of x equals point zero 
Well, now what's going to happen if I take the cosine inverse of both sides? Then, as we did last time, the things in red are going to go into the argument of the cosine function. Okay, but right now we have cosine inverse of cosine x. Well, that's x, and that's what we're trying to find, right? When it says find each angle measure, that's what it's trying to tell us. It's like which angle would go here so the cosine of that angle would end up being this, okay? So one way you could do this problem is you could try each of these things. You could go try to do what's cosine of 1, right? What's cosine of 1 degree? What's cosine of 32 degrees, right? What's cosine of 70 degrees? And see which one of them is equal to this number here. Okay, whichever one is the closest, right? That's why we're going to the nearest degree. All right, so good luck on that. Okay, make sure you use the table, or as I said, use your calculator. So for this one, you can do it on your own. Pause the video right now and try it. Give yourself a shot. Okay, and you should be able to get 70. So that means if you go calculate cosine of 70, it'll be closer to 0 0.3420 than any of the other ones. All right, so now I believe um, the question was, 57 and 58. So here on 57, we have um, a Pythagorean theorem problem. And I had tried to give my students some triples, and they don't always work out nice and neat where you always will have a Pythagorean triple where everything's integers, right? So we have to remember that we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem here, and we have to remember that we're not going to use trigonometry, regular trigonometry, because we don't have any of these angles right now, okay? If we did a little bit of work, we might be able to find one of them, and then you could do that, but you'd have to go label this triangle, say, okay, say I want to find this one, and I'd have to go here and do opposite and all kinds of things. That's not the way we're supposed to solve this problem, okay? When you don't have that angle, you can jump straight to the Pythagorean theorem, okay? We know two sides of the triangle, and that's when we want to use the Pythagorean theorem, all right? We know 11, and we know this one 15, all right? So the ones that are A and B are the two that make the right angle, okay? So I always tell you guys the two that make the right angle, we'll go label those as A and B. So we have X squared plus 11 squared, and on this side we got 15 squared. We do our calculations. 11 squared is 11 times 11, that's 121. 15 times 15 is 225. If I take away 121 from both sides, okay, we can try to see what's going to happen here. So we do our math, okay? We get to this step, and we have um, the 225 minus 121 gives us 104, all right? Um, at this step, we're going to rewrite. We're going to rewrite this step, and then we'll write the roots of each side, okay? This will help us uh, make sure we can keep track of what step happened first, okay? So, the, oh, sorry, the square root of x squared is just x. That's the whole reason for taking the square root of both sides. So now we got to figure out what we can do here. And we can know that 104 is 2 times 52. And since we have an even number again, we could realize that we could, we could split that one up also. So we have 2 times 26. Okay, so we got 2 times 2 times 26. But that number could also get broken down, right? 26 is 2 times 13. Okay, but now we've broken it down all the way. So this is the prime factorization of 104, all right? So now what we have to see is, well, there's only been two twos, right? So what that means is that a two comes out and the, the ones that don't have a match stay inside. So that's the two times 13 and two times 13 is 26. So that would be the way that we get um, the answer for 57. Okay, you can definitely try to uh, see what happens with number 58 right now on your own. Okay, don't be afraid to pause the video or pause it at any step during this process to make sure you uh, can manage it by yourself. Okay, so step one is write the equation and then go put everything inside of it, all right? This is actually why I really usually teach um, to put blank parentheses every time because these numbers can get a little more complicated than just an uh, integer, right? It can be like two root three or something more complicated. All right, A and B, remember, A and B are the two that make the right angle. Okay, so we got x squared and 10 squared go inside of it. Um, the C is now the square root of 257. So we have to put square root of 257 inside of it. All right, we simplify this to become x plus 100. And the square root of 257 squared 
is just 257 because the square and the square root cancel each other out. So now I could take 100 from both sides. And if I take 100 from both sides, we get x squared equals 157. And as I said, in this step, we're going to rewrite it. And then we'll write the square root of each side. And then we get x equals the square root of 157, okay? And then you can try to break that square root down, okay? Is this number even? No, so you're not going to try to take a 2 out of it, okay? Is it a multiple of 3, right? Can we, can we divide this number by 3? All right, well, we can try. Like, what's 1 plus 5 plus 7, right? What's that going to make? Okay, and that makes 13. And since 13 is not divisible by 3, I know this number is not divisible by 3, so it's not divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is it divisible by 7? Okay. Um, it looks like not, right? Because 7 times 20 is going to be 140, and we would end up skipping over 157, right? Because if we add 14, we get 154. So it's not divisible by 7, not divisible by 8. All right, is it divisible by 9? Probably not either, because then it'd be divisible by 3. So we can keep going down the list, okay? And once you guys exhaust your possibilities, you guys can figure out what the true answer is, all right? But that last step, don't forget, is just going to be a technicality. If you can look at the actual multiple choice answers, you'll be able to see it. So, um, you know, try to reduce it. But in this case, um, you'd be able to see the answer is 157, so you wouldn't, you know, continue working on that problem, right? All right, the next one I'm going to cover is going to be 77 through 80. All right, this was by special request, this video. So, uh, you know, let me know if there's anything else you guys need. So as we talk about this problem with arcs, um, we got to try to unlearn some of the things from inscribed angles, okay? I think this is where people start getting confused. Their brains get overloaded, right? There's two different possibilities, all right? All right, that circle isn't good enough, right? Let's try another one. I'll make a perfect one, right? How about that? So we got... Two different circles I want you guys to think about, okay? We have the difference of a central angle, okay? So if that's the center, and I tell you this is 90 degrees, okay? And then I tell you this is A, and that's C, okay? Well, what's the measure of AC? Right? The measure of AC would be 90, okay? Because those have to be equal, right? Those are the same. The definition of arc measure is that it's equal to the central angle, right? That's different. That's different than what we have here when we have a problem like this, right? If I see something here like 30, okay, and then this out here must be 60, right? Remember that little fact that we have, the inscribed angle. So notice that's the difference, okay? In a central angle, they're the same, and that's the center, okay? Whereas in an inscribed angle, right, where the, the vertex of the angle is right on the circle, that would be where you can take half, okay? So... If we're going to do this problem, the first thing that we got to understand is how to actually label it. And I know some people have been struggling with that, okay? So make sure we stay on the arc of the circle. So I start at point G, and then I have to go to K, okay? So I'm going to go to K by connecting those two points, okay? And because they're in order, G, K, I, I have to go to G, and then K, and then I last, okay? So if I go here, I can see I've now represented what this is. This is where a highlighter can help. Okay, now what we have to see is that our rules that we learned about the circle, right? The idea that a whole circle is 360 and that a diameter, right? A line that cuts a circle in half gives us 180. So we have to realize is that this arc, GKJ, is 180 degrees, right? And so if I want to get the whole red arc, I have to add up 180, right? And then add another 49. Because again, if that's 49, then this is also 49. So the answer here would be 180 plus 49. And that would give us 229. We'll work through some more circles examples. So 71 in this case was a problem where it's going to be multi-step. Okay. The first thing that we could realize is that we have a line that cuts the circle in half. Okay. If you see that, that should help you realize that this whole arc this, that I just highlighted in red, all of that should equal 180. Okay, but we know that this piece right here is 172, right? 
So what that means is that this remaining part right here that I'm going to highlight in yellow, right, this remaining part has to add up with 72 to make 180, okay? So that means that we should have 108, okay? But the rule that we get to find the inside angle that we're looking for, this is an inscribed angle that intercepts that arc, right? And so we know the inside will be half, okay? The inscribed angle will be half of 108, which is 54, okay? So that's what's going on on this problem for number 71. Okay, now for number 72, we have a couple of things um, to look at here, right? We know that we want to find this angle. So what that's going to make me uh, want to focus on is which arc does that intercept? Okay, now we can see that it intercepts B, A, W. And now we got to figure out what else, what else can we possibly do, okay? Well, we don't know the blue one, but once we know what the blue is inside, we could put half of it, right? So we have to figure out what is there anything that we could possibly do. The 106 is helpful because we know this piece right there. And the 44 lets us know that part right there. But the only number that can really let us make a next step is this 87, okay? Because you have to observe that it touches right here at A and it touches right there at C, okay? So what that does is it gives us the whole measure of this whole arc ACW, okay? And the measure of that whole arc is it's equal to 87 times 2. And 87 times 2 is 174. Okay, and so what did that really help us figure out? Well, what, now that we know that the whole arc is 174, and from here is already 44, we know this remaining piece from here to here has to add up with 44 to make 174, right? So what does that missing piece have to be? All right, 44 minus 174, that would give us 130. Okay, so we got more and more pieces as we look through this thing. Um, we can figure out now what's, uh, what's happening. I think it's more obvious now. All right, what's going on? We should be able to see that 174, okay? Let's use the yellow to help us find our way around. Okay, 174 takes us from here all the way to there, right? And then I go another 106, right? And now the missing piece, we would need this piece right here, that missing piece right there, this X, would end up being what? What's the theorem that we know? We know that X plus 106 plus 174 equals not 180, but 360 because that will make the whole circle, okay? So we should be able to see that from here again, like I said, X plus 106 plus 174 gives me the whole circle, and so that, that should be 360. So you can solve it from there and figure out what X is, and then once you have X, we'll go label the picture and we'll think about it again. So let's work through it, right? We got X plus 280 equals 360. All right, if I take 280 from both sides, x equals 80. Okay, so now we can go write that here. We'll put 80 there. Okay? And now we could think about what actually happened for this arc that we needed, right? So we'll try to grab another color um, so that we could see something. Or we could even clean up the picture a little bit just so that we could think again. Alright? We figured out that this piece was 80, right? And as I said, we have to figure out this angle which intercepts that whole arc, okay? But that whole measurement is really going to be 80 plus 44. So it's 80 plus 44, that's 124. And 124, we go right here. And now we know the inside number of the inscribed angle would be half. So half of 64 is 62. And you can see how we got the answer for number 72 also. So taking a look at 73, um, we can see the same type of multi-step ideas. As I always tell you guys, the inside half, outside double, if you follow these things, um, you'll kind of just at least be able to keep moving in the right direction, okay? In this case, the only number that could really lead to something else right now is the 75, okay? We can realize that this whole arc has to be 150 degrees, okay? And that's from there to there, right? The whole arc STX, all of that is 150. 
Okay, but now we should realize again that, wait a minute, look, 150 plus 98 plus X right here is going to give me the whole circle. So one more time, I could figure out, well, I know what to do. If I take away 150 and 98 from 360, X will be what is what's left over, all right? So X will be equal to 360 minus 150 minus 98, okay? So take all that away, and you should find your answer of 112. I think we have one more left here. All right, so in this problem, um, again, we got a line going straight through the half of the circle. And so the hint for you is to realize that that means that this whole arc is now equal to 180. And so that means that this piece must be the 80, since there's already 100 right there. Okay, but because this angle that we need to find intercepts that arc that's 80 degrees, all right, inside the inscribed angle would be half of that arc, which is 40. So you would have 40 for 74. Okay, so I'm going to upload this uh, now for you guys. Um, good luck studying for the final exam. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know.